Nobody ever sounded like Charles Lloyd. When I was 17 and I got my uh, fake ID from Tijuana, I was in Shelley's manhole. And there was this very eccentric sax player, brand new, and uh, wow, captivated all of us. And he had an amazing band, you know, with Keith Jarrett and Cecil McBee and Jack DeJeanette. He laid the blueprint, uh, I think, for, for a lot of bands at that time. He was almost like a jazz rock star. He could mix in with rock groups, and he, he was accepted. He was the first jazz guy to play at the Fillmore. That's a very big deal. Those shows were incredible. Charles represents a, a, a type of musician, an era of musicians that is almost extinct. Forest Flower is integrated with a certain time frame when we, a lot of us changed. He was going all over the world. He was in Russia and he was just mad. When he actually decided he was gonna leave music, I was like, I read that down, but I was like, what? At a certain point, I began to suffer musically and I began to suffer personally and I was off my spiritual uh, compass and I could feel it and it, it disturbed me and I had to go away. I could tell. That was so shocking to me. I didn't, I, I, I had no comprehension of anybody except for Greta Garbo who had achieved that level of success who was so disenchanted by what the success actually meant. Whatever you got from me, you now still have it. If you have it, hold on to it because you'll get no more, I'm gone. I hit a wall. I hit a wall and I couldn't really function and the music business was very disenchanting to me at that time. My record company was, it blackballed me. I, I couldn't record for anyone else. I got off the bus, I, I became quiet. You can't shoot an arrow into infinity if you're always in motion, you know. You have to pull the bow back, you know, then the arrow can fly. Mm -hmm. 